Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. This goes out to certain people here in the gun community on YouTube. No more compromise. Stay tuned. I'll tell you, I'm I'm pretty uh I don't know what's the word, disgusted at certain gun channels for even suggesting compromising even a little bit and what i mean is you know they're they're saying oh well the 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 democrats are the, not the democrats but the gun banners are throwing all this stuff at us and maybe if we just um say okay well maybe they should check a little bit better for medical issues when they do background checks they'll lay off the rest or maybe you know so what gun registration is fine you know across the board universal uh, they're not going to take our guns away well I'm here to tell you bullshit. Um, their ultimate goal is to confiscate guns, and they're gonna and they can't do it all in one swoop across the country. So they do it by little pieces. And just to refresh your memory, or a lot of this stuff might have taken place even before you were born, but they've been at it for a very, very long time. 1934 National Firearms Act, 1968 the Gun Control Act, 1986 Firearms Owners Protection Act, 1993 the Brady Hand the the Brady Handgun Violent Act, Violence Act, the 1994 Assault Weapons Ban, 1995 Gun Free School Zone Act, and uh, on top of all of that there's at a minimum, 20,000 laws across this country that deal with guns. And a lot of them are not enforced. And people who do get thrown in jail for a lot of these, uh, it's a revolving door. And they're let right out for good behavior or whatever. And then they commit the same crimes again. Most of the gun crimes are repeat offenders, mind you. But politicians want to go after you because they don't like you, the gun owner. Trust me, the anti-gun politicians and anti-gun organizations don't like you. It's not the gun. They don't like you having the power to protect yourself. Don't be under any illusion. Now let's talk about gun registration just a little bit. Um, this is uh, a myth. Gun registration will help police find suspects. Now let's talk about the fact. Registration in Hawaii, it's required in Hawaii, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and yet there has not been a single case where registration was instrumental in identifying someone who committed a crime. <laughs> so they've been lying to you? Well, yes, because they don't like you and they just want to take your guns away. So... Next, um, registration does not lead to confiscation. Well, tell that to some people in California, Canada. Um, what they, they might not like come and rip the gun out of your hand, but they're going to make you a criminal if you keep that gun. They're, gonna, they're going to just basically set up the laws in such a way that you're going to own a gun that's, that will be illegal somehow. And it's been done in California and um, I think uh, Missouri is trying to pass some laws that's actually going to do the same, where it's basically saying, if, you know, you got to turn your gun in or destroy it kind of stuff. And it's happened in California with the SKS. But um, it, it's, it's just not a myth. Uh, let me see. In Canada, let me see. The handgun registration law in 1934 was a source used to identify and confiscate without compensation over half of the registered handguns in 2001. Um, of course, we know what happened in Germany. Um, it happened in Australia in 1996, uh, California 1989, um, New York 1967, also in New York right now. Um, happened in Bermuda, Cuba, Greece, Ireland, Jamaica, Soviet, Georgia. It, the list goes on. All right, next. Gun shows are supermarkets for criminals. Uh, no, they're not. Only 0.7% uh, of convicts bought their firearms at gun shows. 39.2% of them were obtained illegally in the street. Let me see. The FBI concluded that one study 
that no firearms acquired and gun shows were used to kill cops. So you, so you could see that this whole um, gun show loophole thing is, is a bunch of bull. This is so a person could give, you know, transfer a gun to another person. It is not something that really deals specifically with um gun show loopholes and i'll tell you the issue because a lot of people says you know what that's fine let's go ahead and just get rid of that and if you want to transfer a gun it has to be done with the, the full ffl you know through an ffl and get the nicks check and all that good stuff let me tell you why this is this is potentially a problem because on face value it doesn't look bad at all however here here's the issue let's say that a gun that you have in your collection is legal right now but they're passing good legislation like it seems like every freaking day and all of a sudden they say okay um that particular assault weapon you know your your ar is now a, a banned weapon but we'll grandfather you in but you're not allowed to transfer it anymore you're not allowed to buy sell whatever well here's where the issue comes in if they say that you you cannot transfer a gun without a you know without a nix check and without going through an ffl you can't transfer that gun anywhere so when you pass away you can't give it to your kid um you're gonna have to destroy it or turn it in because you can't legally transfer it see it, it can bite you in the butt down the road they ain't telling you that they are just trying to put walls up around you eventually or actually they're trying to put trip wires all around you and eventually you're gonna trip that off and they're going to take your gun somehow one way or another let's see myth prison isn't the answer to gun control well from 1960 1980 per capita imprisonment for violent crimes fell from 738 to 227 in the same period violent crime rates nationwide triple um Another fact, why does crime rise when criminals are released from prison early? Because they are likely to commit crime, uh, more crimes. 67.5% were rearrested uh, with new felonies. So you see, 67.5% of the people who were thrown in there for a gun crime to begin with commit another one as soon as they're let out. And they're let out early um, all the time. They just refuse to, to address the problem. If someone commits a crime with a gun, they need to stay in jail. And that will keep gun crime. That that would make a big the biggest dent on gun crime. But the these politicians refuse to do the hard work. They refuse to do the heavy lifting lifting. They just want to take the easy way out, and that's just you know, we'll pass some more gun laws and they'll think we did something when in fact they don't do nothing and actually they they don't even enforce them. They wait, they're going to wait for you just to trip over one of these laws and then confiscate guns because they don't want you to have guns. Um, let's see. Gun laws are being enforced. <laughs> okay, the fact is that during the Clinton administration, federal prosecutions for gun-related crimes dropped more than 44%. <laughs> uh, here's another fact of the 3,353 prohibited individuals that obtained firearms the Clinton administration only investigated 110 of them um, <laughs> th this is just a joke now here's another one whenever something happens and they take advantage of the situation like what happened up in Connecticut right? they say well we just have to do something if it saves the life of one child, it's worth trying. On face value, that sounds really good. But the fact is, firearms in private hands are used in an estimated 2.5 million times each year to prevent crime. As a matter of fact, it prevents um, killing of children um, and rape and aggravated assault and kidnapping actually more children are killed <laughs> if people didn't have guns to defend themselves so that is a lie <laughs> it's it's an absolute lie all right we're getting close to the end i i, I don't want to make this too long um let's see let's talk about diane feinstein again if you're not 
still not believing that they are just out to take all your guns. Here's something that she had said. She said, banning guns addresses a fundamental right of all Americans to feel safe. That came out of her mouth. If you could have gotten, I'm sorry, if I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. Okay, so she doesn't want to just take the thing here or there. Her actual motivation is to get them all. And that's what most banners ultimately want to do, but they know they can't do it all at once. So again, starting from back in 1934, they've been at it, and they will continue to do it until they have all your guns. Here's something from the vice president, Mr. Biden. He had stated when he was a senator from Delaware, banning guns is an idea whose time has come. So there you go. Their ultimate goal is total gun confiscation. So... What I'm here to say is no more compromise. No more compromise. Again, National Firearms Act, Gun Control Act, Firearms Owners Protection Act, Brady Handgun Violence Act, Assault Weapons Ban, the Gun Free Zone Act, and the 20,000 gun laws that we have across the country, and who knows what other state freaking laws and city ordinances and other regulations led whatever just it goes on and on and on and they're going to do everything they can because they don't like you the gun owner so i don't want to hear any more of this compromise stuff just oh i only have a bolt action whatever you know what they want them all they're just gonna take a little more time to get around to you or maybe when you pass it to your kid you're you're screwing your kid because they'll be taking it away from him or her one more thing before we wrap it up. I was really debating whether or not to add this into the video, and I, I, th I really need to. So, um, th this is really unscripted, but on face value, again, it really sounds like a great idea to go ahead and make sure that medical records and everything are incorporated into the next check. And, you know, at some point, you're going to have Obamacare, and all your, your records are going to be electronic. Uh, put into the system now if anybody has any kind of psychological issue they should be taking your guns away right yeah it, you know on face value it sounds like a great idea to prevent it but how far are they going to go here here's where my concern is okay let's say you have a couple of guns and life is beginning a little stressful lately there i, I give you a lot of reasons why life could be stressful so you go to your doctor and he gives you a antidepressant <laughs> so is that enough to set off flags for gun confiscation or let's say your kid goes to the doctor and your doctor asks your kid while you're not in the room does daddy have a gun? You, it sounds like you have some family issues going on. Maybe we should take the guns out of the house. You see where I'm going with this? You, they will ultimately go far enough because they want your guns to also use that as a tool for gun confiscation. I guarantee it. So just one more thing to, uh, to think about. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and you. And I hope you have a great evening, and I will see you again on Friday. Take care.